So this is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by the current WBO Super Featherweight Champion of the World and all over a three-time, three-weight World Champion in Emmanuel Navarrete. Uh, pleasure to meet you, sir. Un placer conocerte, campeón. Muchas gracias. Thank you very much. Thank um, you very much. So we'll talk about your upcoming fight with Oscar Valdez. It's a mouth-watering <laughs> fight in due course. But I want to take you right back to the very beginning First of all, just tell us how you first got into the sport of boxing. What what brought you to the sport? Okay, eh, fue fue muy temprano para mí, eh, apenas siete ocho años de edad. It, it was very early where I started, maybe seven or eight years old, where I started as an amateur. I was following in the footsteps of my brothers because they boxed as well. And so I was following them. And so I started training, attended the training sessions. And for me, it was nothing too iconic uh, to be boxing at such a young age. It wasn't that much important. But as the years grow, as the years uh, went by, I started growing and I noticed that it was easy for me. It was something simple for me to throw punches, to defend myself. I saw that I did it well and that I had natural abilities. Obviously, I was still very small back then, but I started growing, and my amateur trajectory was of 120 fights, my amateur career. And then I turned pro at 17, and as soon as I turned pro at 17, um, as soon as I turned 17, I turned pro, and then I participated in a professional tournament of four-round fights, and I started developing more as a pro until uh, obtaining a world title. Yeah, I wanted to talk about that tournament. It's brought about your only defeat so far as a pro very early in your career. But looking at the notes about the fight on BoxRec, it seems like there's another story there. So maybe you could tell us that story. Yes, it was my fifth or sixth fight. It was against, it was against Daniel Argueta. He was from the capital of Mexico City. And it was the final of the tournament. We both uh, were able to get to the finals. And, you know, the, the true story is that he didn't make weight. We were having weigh-ins the morning of. At 10 a.m., he would weigh in. And then the tournament, the fight was at night. Um, and so he couldn't drop weight. He was saying that his body didn't let him, that naturally he had grown, something. That was his excuse. And so he ended up uh, not making the weight class. He was four and a half pounds above me, about two kilos. And so we don't really don't know how much he weighed. Uh, I remained champion, but we ended up fighting. And so uh, that that's how I lost my decision. And just I'll, I'll incorporate into the next question. So it's not just a really short one. But does that frustrate you that that's the only defeat on your record for such a strange reason? And moving on from that. What's been your proudest achievement of all your title victories so far? No, no me molesta. Creo que todos perdemos alguna vez. It doesn't bother me. We all lose at some point, unfortunately. And so there was not much I could do in that situation. So it doesn't bother me. And I decided to fight, um, you know, and, and even though uh, there, there was a disadvantage, so to speak, I lost and, you know, it, it helped me work harder. It helped me to start looking for those things that I really want with hard work and effort. And uh, in terms of my most proudest moment would be the first world title. It was a watershed moment in my career. And that's where I saw my potential. I saw all that I could do uh, in the sport. And kind of another double question, if you'll permit me. Um, who's been your toughest opponent to date? And also, I read uh, last week that you said at one point that Maurizio Lara was the hardest puncher you've ever faced in sparring. Is, is that true? And if so, is that still the case? Mm. I think uh, I, yeah, I have sparred with Mauricio Lara. He's very strong. He hits very hard. But when it comes to fights, being in the ring with people, I faced many fighters who I felt that were harder punchers. When I fought with Isaac Dogbe, he was one of them. Dennis Contreras from Guadalajara. He hits hard. Eliciar Tronco Valenzuela from Sinaloa. They, they were the guys who hit very hard, and I felt their punch. And in terms of you know the toughest fights, I would say it would be Isaac Dogbe because it was the first time that I fought outside of my country first title opportunity um, you know and he was at the top at the time and so I didn't have that much experience fighting 12 rounds and for a tall uh, to, in, in a, and for a world title and so it was with Dogbe that it was my toughest fight
el primer, el primer oportunidad por título mundial. You became a three weight world champion in your last fight against the substitute opponent in Liam Wilson from Australia, uh, supposed to be Oscar Valdez. That's now happening on August the 12th, which we'll talk about in a minute. Liam Wilson, since that defeat, has complained, or his team have also complained, what they suggest is a long count when you were um, put on the canvas in the fourth round before coming back to stop Wilson. What do you make of his team's complaints? Well, nothing, you know, they put it past me. I've been focusing on me and my personal things. I put that chapter behind me. He can say a, a lot, but it's not really important to me. I put that behind me. And for me in the moment, the referee acted according to his knowledge, to his experience, to what he has learned and nothing more. And so outside of that, I really can't say much. Yourself and Oscar Valdez both have deserved reputations as action fighters. You're the taller guy, you're the longer guy. We've seen Valdez not too long ago get outboxed by Shakur Stevenson. Do you feel pressure to make this an action fight, as is your reputation? Or do you think you might have more success boxing uh, against Oscar Valdez? No, eso no lo puedo decir, obviamente. Este... You know, I can't really say, obviously, um, you know, because we know that with Shakur, he was superior in regards to the style. But in this fight, there could be many surprises, um, you know, and there's going to be something good. Without a doubt, there's going to be something good. And there was always surprises. But in each fight, I always look for the knockout. And this is uh, not the exception. Are you at all disappointed that thus far, despite winning world titles at three weights, you haven't unified in any of those divisions yet? And if so, would you like to unify now at super featherweight? Sí, lo he hablado constantemente en cada entrevista que me preguntan siempre. Yes, I talked about that in previous interviews when people asked me about that. And I've let people know that I'm, I would be excited um, to be able to unify in, in divisions. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to um, have that opportunity to unify. That process has kind of been strange. But then you kind of learn to focus and leave that stuff in the air and uh, focus on what you can do in your preparation. And I do that so that it doesn't hurt me. And so I've been walking my own path. And now I have Valdez in front of me and I'm focused on him. But I am... Uh, uh, willing to unify if I can be well, Valdez uh, I, I would like to unify but I'm focused on this fight right now so just with that in mind uh, the rival champions currently I believe are uh, Oshaki Foster Joe Cordina uh, Hector Vargas for the WBA who do you feel is the best of those three and and why no sé la verdad no he tenido no me he tenido tanto a pensar you know, I haven't thought about that. I haven't thought about who could be the best. I haven't investigated that much. I haven't taken the time to get to know who, who uh, they are. Uh, I've seen some fights, like the one between Foster and Vargas. I also saw the one between Vargas and Gervonta. Um, and so I haven't thought of it, but who could be um, the, 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 the champ or, or who I could face. Um, I see all of them as champions. And so I feel like they're champions for a reason. And so, you know, with each one, I would have to focus differently. I won't choose because I'll fight against whoever unifies. And once, um, you know, someone is willing to unify, once in that moment when they've decided to unify against me, then I'll focus on that opponent. And just finally, um, before I let you go, we've seen you carry your power up from junior feather all the way to super feather. How much further up in weight do you feel you can go and still be effective? Pues, uh, realmente no lo sé. No, 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 I don't know, really. No I haven't really thought about how far I can go and continue hitting hard. I don't know into what division I can make it. But if we look into my past, well, I've, I started at flyweight at 50 kilos, which is 112 pounds. And since then, I mean, look at that division. I debuted there and now I'm five or six divisions above that. So that it's important to look at that and see the jump in the margin uh, that I've been able to uh, do. I guess, oh, sorry, I know I said that was the final one, but now you've said that, I'll have to ask. Do you have any, uh, would you call Manny Pacquiao at all? I know he's obviously not Mexican, but would you call him an inspiration? Because he's someone like you 
who's gone from flyweight all the way through the weights, obviously a lot further than you have so far, but it's a similar tale. Yes, of course. Um, Pacquiao, for me, I've said it before openly, he's one of my biggest idols. Um, despite the last fight, the, despite the losses, he's been a maximum idol without a doubt. He's been, and he's a, without, you know, underestimating, underappreciating other fighters, he's above many others. And the way in which he grew up divisions from one division to another has been impressive. You can't say that about other fighters. Brilliant. Emmanuel, it's been an absolute pleasure. Uh, very best of luck for August 12th. And um, let's do this again soon. Gracias. Mucha suerte para el 12 de agosto. Y lo vamos a hacer de nuevo esta entrevista. Gracias. Vale. Muchas gracias. Adiós. Thank you very Nada. much. Adiós. Appreciate it.